hey, you, show me your textures and I will show you your crashes. All right, today we are going to talk about texture compression in Unity. No matter if you're doing games or VR experiences or even kids apps, if you're doing Unity development, you really need to take care about texture compression. What do I mean by that? Let me share this screen with you. So do you see this lady uh, 3D model? If we check the materials, you will see that at some point we have a reference to uh, some textures, right? If I look, for example, at the diffuse map, and then I just inspect it, you will see tons of import options that I normally cover in other tutorials, right? In this tutorial, we're going to take care more about the compression part of that. If you go to the part below, you will find information about the texture size, the texture format, and the size that it takes. So here on the left side, you see the texture size in pixels or pixels. Here we are talking about a 4K texture. Hope that it makes sense. Now here on the middle part, we will see the texture format. Right now we are using RGB 8-bit. And on the right side, we have access to the texture size in M bytes, right? This is more or less the space that it's going to take in the build that you will make, right? If you're using Jenkins or something like this, for example, you finally, at the end of the process, you get an APK. And uh, in this case, you will be adding more or less 64 M bytes to your build size, right? It might be a bit less if you are using some uh, compression algorithms like uh, LZ4 and such, but more or less is going to be what you see here. What is going to happen is that as soon as you need this texture to be displayed, Unity is going to upload this texture to your RAM and then VRAM, okay, video RAM. And that's exactly the space that is going to take there. We are talking here about a 4K texture. So it is a relatively big texture, but nevertheless, those are very common. And the problem with this is that 64 MBytes, it's a lot of memory. Okay. You don't really want to waste so much memory in one texture. So how do we deal with such big textures? How do we deal with the fact that we are taking so much space in the package? and in the video RAM. Well, what we need to do here is to use texture compression. And by that, I do not mean PNGs or JPGs or something like this, because these formats are intended more for the CPU, right? Those formats work by analyzing the whole image and then doing uh, certain iterations to get the texture compressed or not even texture, like the image compressed, right? However, this kind of formats do not work well with uh, GPU real-time rendering because what the GPU needs is just a few pixels of that texture at once, right? We don't need the whole image, we just need a few pixels because you don't always see the whole texture on the screen. Uh, maybe one cube or one model is only uh, slightly visible from one side. For example, if I go here and I only see uh, the tip of the shoes, for example, right? Then I don't need to process the entire texture just to render that. And it might also be, you know, that we are very far away from this model and we don't have to sample so many textiles. That's why for the GPUs, we need a specific type of texture compression. Now, the benefits of using texture compression is not only the space that it takes in your build size or VRAM, right? It is also that you are able to improve the GPU performance by, you know, just transferring less data every frame from VDRAM into the cache units for your textures, or even from the package into the RAM and then from the RAM to the VRAM. The less data that we transfer, the better, especially on mobile, right? On mobile, we don't have a lot of memory bandwidth, so you need to be careful with this size that you see on this textures. So how do we do this? Well, in the texture import settings, 
Here we have for each of the platforms some specific settings for texture compression. For example, if I'm targeting Android, which I am, I can just say override for Android and then choose one texture format that I like, right? This is not something that you should choose based on your taste, uh, or not at least not exclusively, but also on the hardware compatibility. Mostly because not every hardware supports every format. And if the hardware doesn't support it, well, then Unity is going to decompress the texture on the fly, which is going to cost you a lot of loading time, and it's just going to take you know much more space in the video RAM. Chances are that you are going to crash your application if your hardware doesn't support the texture format that you pick. So it becomes very important to choose the right format for each of your platforms. Yes, as an example, if I chose a relatively modern texture compression algorithm like ASTC 8x8, then I can just uh, press apply. And you will see that now it is taking 5.3 M bytes. So that's like even more than 10 times better. Just imagine you have 10 of these textures. Instead of taking 64 times 10, about 600 M bytes, then it could take 10 times 5, which is maybe 50 M bytes. The difference is huge, especially considering that textures is usually the type of asset that takes the most memory in all types of projects, okay? The less memory that you steal from the operating system, the less upset you are going to make the operating system, and that means that it is not going to crash or kill your application. And if that's not the case, then users will be happy about it, and they will not leave you a one-star review for free in your app. So I hope that I made it clear why texture Compression is so important. Now, there are a few more things. Uh, for example, um, you might want to select one format that is crunched. Okay. So if, for example, I select ETC2, okay, four bits, this takes about, let's see how much it takes, 10.7 M bytes, right? Now, if I decided to use a different algorithm like ETC2, 8-bit, in this case, we are about uh, at about 21 M bytes. I could also go for the crunched variety of ETC2, right? If I hit apply, then this texture is going to take two M bytes. So that's a huge win in terms of space that this texture takes in the package. However, uh, this is going to still take the original, I think it was about 21 M bytes in video RAM. So crunch compression, what it does is just to compress what was already compressed through a CPU algorithm. But once you uncompress it, then it's going to, you know, just submit the original compressed texture to the GPU, which is going to still take the same amount as the original one that we had set. In this case, it was about 21 M byte, right? So crunch compression just applies another layer of compression, which makes the texture take much less space in the packet size, and it's going to make it look much worse. And you're not going to save any space on uh, video RAM, right? But yeah, crunch compression might be then useful if you just want to reduce the packet size, but yeah, it comes with a high cost in visual fidelity, so be careful with that. Other than that, if you go back to a different algorithm, like for example, I like ASTC 8x8, here we also have something called compressor quality. For ASTC, for example, there are three options, fast, normal, and best. This only means the time that we spend here in Unity, in the Unity editor, compressing this texture. If we set it to fast, then it's going to take very little time for Unity to compress this texture in editor or build time and it's going to still take the same amount of memory. However, the quality will be worse because Unity takes a bit less time trying to figure out how to compress this better at the same space, right? So if I do this in the fast mode, you will see that Unity took much shorter to compress it. 
and the size is the same. Okay, those are minor details. The more important question is, which format should you use? Okay, so this is a complex topic because it really comes down to uh, choosing between three factors. First is the hardware support, like I mentioned. Not every hardware supports the same texture formats. Then it also comes down to the texture size that you want to achieve. For example, if I wanted to achieve a, a big compression ratio at the cost of quality, I could just go for ASTC uh, 12 by 12 block. Okay. Actually, let me show it to you. Let me just hit apply. Here it is, 2.4 bytes. And it also depends on the nature of the texture. It is not the same to compress one video texture or one uh, light map or one normal map or one uh, velocity map. There are many types of textures that we are using in game development. So depending on the texture that you're compressing, you might want to choose one option over the other one. However, the most important factor is usually hardware support. So here's what I would suggest you to do. If you're targeting standalone targets like console or PC, it is usually a, a choice between DXT, that's a bit older, the format, or uh, PC formats. For example, PC7 is really good. However, it requires something along the lines of DirectX 11 and onwards, right? So if you are below that, you might need to stick to uh, DXT, for example, 1, if you are compressing an albedo texture without alpha or DXT5, if you are using RGBA textures. If you are targeting Android, this is all about choosing between ETC2, which is supported by, let's say, about 90% of the devices, at least uh, according to some statistics from last year, or ASTC, which is supported by, I think, about 80% of the devices. Here you need to do your own research. ETC2 is a bit older and ASTC is uh, quite newer and it offers you more features. So yeah, you need to research your target audience and find out What's the best balance for you? Now, if you're targeting iOS, usually the chances are that you need to choose between PVRTC, which is a bit sucky, you know, it looks pretty bad. Or you can also choose to go for ASTC, which is not supported universally. I think it is only supported from iPhone 6S and above. Again, you need to do your own research. So if you really want to understand how texture format works, then I will suggest you to have a look at the Unity Performance Task Force where I dedicate about 40 to one hour videos to talk about this. Okay? Then I explain to you what you need to choose for which kind of situations. And I also let you see the visual differences between the different formats. Let me show you one example. So here, for example, I have a few textures. On the left side, I'm going to keep the original texture and compress. And on the right side, I am going to decide that I want to use, for example, the XT1 crunch compression, which is a very old but widely supported texture algorithm for a PC and standalone, right? If I do this, you might not be able to see straight away the differences. You see, for example, that DXT1 doesn't support alpha. That's why this part doesn't look very well on the right side compared to the left side. And here, what I show you is also the visual differences between these formats. And the pink dots actually mean where the biggest visual differences are located, right? So here we can tell that uh, the eyes, the area of the eyes uh, tend to be pretty bad, right? Where the contrast ratio increases. If I zoom in, you should also be seeing at some point the differences, right? But again, I don't know about the visual quality. All I know is that this is something that your players will be able to notice eventually, okay? Also, if I go, for example, for ASTC 12 fast, you'll also see uh, some differences, right? However, the alpha is kept, so in that regard, it works. Let's now choose one of the worst compression algorithms in terms of visual quality, which would be RGBA to this. If I select that, just have a look at this. It is 
pretty bad, the accuracy of the colors, right? You might be even able to tell that by looking at this picture. Just look here uh, around the black lines, right? That's why it becomes super important that you understand what texture compression is and what the benefits and the weaknesses are for each texture compression algorithm. So if you really want to understand everything that you need to know about texture compression for your project, have a look at my Unity Performance Task Force. I think I talk about this in week number eight. And by the way, if you join the Unity Performance Task Force, you will have access to this tool for free as long as you're subscribed to that. You will be able to tell the differences between different quality levels and also including different texture types, for example, texture compression, right? If you want, for example, to notice the difference between the original and choosing something like uh, PVRTC, right? you will be able to better understand the differences and then to make better judgments and decisions based on this data. All right, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Talk to you soon.